You're standing on my phone now. What on earth is going on? What is going on? Oh no. <laughs> this is hilarious. I have a feeling this is live on Facebook and I'm going to check because last time I did this, I sat there staring at the screen forever, just wondering what's going on because they don't link it up fast enough. So I'm going to check on Facebook this week. I am checking everything to make sure something is going on. Um, whoops. Let's just see. Oh, help. Help, help, help. It says it's live. And then what I want to check is, I want to check if actually they've shared it to myself without anyone else. So I'm going to keep speaking to you. This is Inara Griffin. And I'm here to talk about the little book of influence. And also to say that the book was released this week. So let me have a quick look on my own page to see if this, if anything is happening. Because if it isn't, oh, I am, I'm on, yay. And I'm speaking now, let me see if it's, uh, is the audience public? No, it's locked, there we go, let's make it public. Hey everybody, this is Anara Griffin and I'm here to talk to you about not only is it the new moon and we've got the new moon of February. So this is a, a really powerful um, start to the year to become New Earth influencers. But it's also the week that my book has been published. And so I want to talk to you about this book, which is the little book of influence, which is a manifesto for New Earth influencers and leaders to literally read this book it's meant to be the little book of influence. It's not meant to be long. So that what you would do is you'd have the feeling of reading it. You'd read the different uh, ways that you could get your idea out, your business out, uh, your what maybe has been a hobby, and then you want to send it out even further, um, or you want to make it into a business. You would literally read this and you'd hit the ground running because it's meant to be this kind of level of inspiration that we don't normally get in the world. I, I remember a book actually years ago. I don't know if you remember The Invitation, but The Invitation was a book that it also was a small, thin book. But the, the beginning passageway was just, it opened up your heart to, you know, this is for the mothers. I remember there was something about the mothers and uh, we're the ones who actually come and feed the children. And it was this whole um, spiritual manifesto to get out there and do something of importance. This, in a different way, is meant to be that. And the reason it's the little book of influence is because I find myself that when I'm engaged in long documents or looking at something f and, and getting into the intellectual space, it takes me away from the actual just doing of the thing, the actual... Um, you know, boom, boom, boom. And because I was a coach for the last six years, a lot of the issues that people have is that initiatory, how are we actually going to do something in the world? So this is meant to help you with guidelines. I'm going to read a little bit from the book later on. And I also want to uh, just talk about what's going on with this new moon, because we're stepping into at the beginning of the new earth era, we stepped into it on the winter solstice of 2020. We have just had what we would call the, the most significant ritual in ancient times of Imbolg. And it's the, it's the beginning of first light. It's the cracking of the ice. It's got this kind of genius breakthrough kind of energy that goes on with it. And because of that, what you also have is great flashes of inspiration. Um, it, it's got a, 
a cleansing and purification theme going on at this time. So in other words, there's a letting go of old order, letting go of ways of being, letting go of uh, people who you've hung out with, who no longer are at your frequency, shall we say. Because one of the earliest, uh, toughest lessons I think that I definitely had in my life was that I assumed everybody was there for life. You know, it's like that puppies are there for life thing, not just for Christmas. With friends, I used to feel, well, friends have got to be here for life. And then the, the toughest one, of course, is lovers are here for life. Well, none of that is true. You know, you, go, you move through these cycles. And as we shift into the cycle of new earth, you may find that you really need or have outgrown a certain community and you need other people of a certain level for yourself to stimulate and move forward. And if you aren't getting that, now is the time that you'll feel it quite poignantly. Um, so one thing that I was thinking about this, this week, this you know season, if you like, I was having these bizarre dreams about um, people who I had been either hurt by in the past or let down or, you know, in some examples betrayed, actually, I would say it was that strong series of dreams, series of encounters, and we're in Mercury retrograde. So retrogrades often give you that look back or the re examination or the reflection or um, anything to do with re is what it's all about. And I thought this is just seriously, um, like take note, because there were so many people from different past experiences, but all from a certain negative that I had, had had to put up with. So I asked the question, what was the issue that I'd been looking at at that time? And it was ambition. And I realized that I was surrounded by people who were ambitious in the way that they thought I could get them somewhere. They thought I could make them rich or famous, and they really did not contribute that much, but they, tried to ride on my my wings if you like and so looking back at it what i noticed is there is no charge there's no energy there anymore and i asked the question why is that because i've outgrown them that cycle has truly gone and moved on and with that that means that i'm really looking for very high frequency people to collaborate and work with and partner with because i am at this level of you know, a fresh start, new energy streaming in. And the people that I want to really connect with are people who are, are the new earth influencers. And so they're, they're people who are actually shifting life as we know it. I'll go back to something that I said before, because I keep having to define new earth. And every time it, it hits a different note, even, even in the saying of it, even in the way that I relate to it. So new earth, a time of great prophecy that has been there for hundreds, thousands of years. So one of the examples of that is the Mayan calendar. We are no longer in the Mayan calendar. We're out of time. It we're in non-existent space on the Mayan calendar. Now we've stepped off it. So what does that give you? It gives you a kind of freedom, a new, if you're out of time, then anything is possible because you're no longer within the boundaries and constructs of a time system that was set up before. I find that very interesting because all the business that I've taught in spiritual business and challenged people in very corporate structures to understand is that I work with the cycles, the ancient cycles of moon, sun, of ancient rituals. And is it possible that ancient cycles in this deeply, um, you know, like group consciousness way are guiding us to the best times to do things. It is my belief that that is the case and that nature as teacher is teaching us on those cyclical levels that we aren't here to just be driven to, you know, rise up and become faster, more aggressive, more powerful and leave everybody behind. We've got this different, and this is the kind of way that I describe it. It's like these swirling spiral, like 
patterns of cycles that come in where there's, there is perfect timing. And it's one of the things that I, I believe in and I teach. And if you can line yourself up for perfect timing, then it takes all the pressure off of this like fast journey of rising. It's quite aggressive, very masculine, old masculine, I would say, not new masculine. Um, so we can see that's one thing about New Earth, that we're looking at different power structures now. If we're no longer doing this, like just going up and up and up and it's linear and there's only that to it, then when we get a different power structure such as New Earth, which is the space to create new space out of time and then we've got divine feminine interplay of that is collaboration and invitation and the expression of entering into other people's space to be able to produce results that are way bigger than you could produce on your own and so what does that look like in power structures? Um, a, a joint venture that I've just gone into with a group of people and friends, they're all friends, is a new yoga teacher training or meditation teacher training to help them get online and to become, it's called Shine Online. And we're just in the process of putting the final uh, stages together on that. But it's a collaboration of four parties coming together, five actually, because one is a couple. And when I think about how easy that is, because you stay in the in the lane that you are really excellent at. So I stayed in the spiritual business lane and how to expand business. Then my friend Patty Troisi, who is a Hollywood actress and has been on camera most of her life. And she's been involved in that level of excellence at Hollywood standards, then she has come on to to work in collaboration about how to help people to create their home studio. You know, and, and I've worked in film too, but it wasn't my thing. It is her thing. So why don't I stay in just my lane, which is all the spiritual business. And also it was my idea. So I invited people in to join me. And then Rachel, and Jules, who are a couple who run Exhale Yoga Retreats, I've been on them. I think they're just simply amazing. And their business was really impacted with COVID because they ran all the yoga teacher trainings and all the retreats in the flesh. And so in 2020, they just found that so much was canceled. Um, they themselves have had to rise up and, and go online. So they have a very loyal community. I am one of their loyal community and I observed when Rachel wrote a post about how tough it had been running literal events in the in the COVID time, all of which had been cancelled. Um, I reached out to her quite naturally and said, you know, I can help. I can help with this. Now, to me, what a different power structure, because what we've got is the combination of three different parties excellence grouped together to create a new program and the new program is really at, at, at a very high level we'll have um on it will be evergreen because we've shot a lot of videos but there's also interaction monthly with different experts outside of the evergreen and this is it's a total joy because not one of us is having to take on the whole thing i'm running most of the business side of it which is always a thrill and a pleasure to me. And it means that um, the, the sum of the four parts is way bigger than four parts. It's, it's this idea of you bring these people in who are your friends and collaborators, and then each one has got certain expertise, which is going to lead it down one route and then lead it down another route. And you can see that is a very different power structure. So as I came even towards the contracting of that, I'm looking at keeping 15% of the business. This is a model I'm using right now, 15% to run the business of it. And then everybody else gets 28.33% of the proceeds. In other words, the biggest structure shift is I'm not getting it all right. 
I'm not, I'm creating a deal of joint venture and I'm really not being greedy with it or, or anything. I want the thing to thrive. And, and that is new earth. Th that in a nutshell is the power shift. So we make things more possible through collaboration and invitation than you ever will have thought before. Um, added to that, that local is now global. So you're dealing with a global vi village. And the biggest shift that's going on is getting comfortable with being online. And there are all these little things that you learn along the way of, you know, as you've, es you've scaled, I would say escalated, but also scaled yourself uh, onto the digital online world. Notice what happens, you know, as you evolve, that certain systems work for you and certain don't, right? So I, I am now in a position where I feel I'm at a stage of mastery in it. I've run events for 28 years and then I've come onto the the internet. I feel very comfortable with that. I mean, I've got six planets in Aquarius, so I'm super comfortable with uh, tech and digital and all of that kind of thing. I'm super comfortable with communication. But when I look at some people who, you know, the, the hardest thing for them is to just do a Zoom the hardest thing, they haven't even looked at their background. You know, there's all this sort of clutter behind them. Even the basics, they really haven't mastered. And they may have mastered teaching in the flesh, but they're having to go back to another basic. That is cyclical power structures being um, having to be reinvented yet again. So New Earth, it's like we're having an opportunity to all go through a learning process. Um, and then I want to add in another piece that over the last few months, what I've become highly aware of is that though my audience is quite often 95% women and to the queens and the those amazing sisters, medicine women, um, powerhouses, entrepreneurs out there who I've worked with, you know, full due respect. And all of a sudden in my in my awareness, I became very acutely aware that I must work with the brothers and I must work. Now, I, I've always worked with a few good men, as I call them, but something is shifting. I mean, given that I've done initiations over <laughs> the same period, 28 years, initiations of um, men and women, my path is Wicca. So it has to include men and women in a, in a sacred circle. That's one of the tenets of Wicca that we work with. It's not about um, your sexuality. It's about that you want to see the reflections of the other in the circle with you. So I've ended up um, initiating many men in my lifetime, but I haven't worked with them in the same context, say in business, magical cyclical business. And all of a sudden I feel the calling to do that. It's become like a directive that came in very quickly uh, with the help of my tantric coach, Celine Levy, who I've been working with for a year and a half. And, and she heard me talking about this and she watches my body when I'm, you know, embodying what I'm thinking about. And she saw how lit up I was and how excited and grounded I was to start to direct all of this energy towards the men. And so one of the things that I'm doing in New Earth is I have not even concluded what it is exactly because I don't want to be a coach anymore, just a coach. So it's more like a level of mentorship or uh, as I say, I'm an advisor to kings. And if you understand my archetype is the high priestess. So think about King Arthur with Merlin. That's the relationship I would have, except I'd be Morgan Le Fay, which is the fairy feminine who is dealing with the king and advising him and also allowing him to bring in all of his feminine, divine feminine aspects. So again, it would be very different form of business. It won't be that aggressive, masculine, competitive, like dog eat dog business. It's actually where the king and I get to express himself fully 
and to teach men the cycles of business. And with the cycles that I work with, there will be key times to step up, key times to plant, key times to harvest, key times to step back and reflect. And even in the methods that I've always involved in certainly coaching, there's always been a spaciousness to every cycle that I insist, especially for the A-type personalities, no, this is the space time, space. And that is where some of the best ideas come from, by allowing yourself to get off the hamster wheel of doing, instead to becoming, to allowing, to receiving. And much of the work that um, I'm, I'm led to right now is to work with men who are very much in their own power, very much creating on, on the planet. So they've got big ideas. And then I can operate as the advisor and I stand for them, like to be a stand for the Kings. So the, the program or the, the kind of the languaging that I'm getting around is the 11 Kings. Why the 11 Kings? Because we're at a period of mastery. I'm definitely at a period of mastery in my life. And so it's 11 is the number of mastery. Funnily enough, it's 11 today. It's the 11th of February. So I'm, I'm expressing this because when you express into spaces, then what happens is it attracts and you get the invitation straight back. So the 11 Kings is my next piece of work. And then I'm going to read a little bit from the little book of influence. So first chapter, um, last week I, I did the preface and I now want to move into chapter one or let's do the introduction. I'll get the glasses on. And if you're here, I, just so you know, because I'm streaming this from Zoom onto Facebook Live, I can't see any of your comments. But if you want to, again, mention, are you a New Earth leader or influencer? Please tell me what you do. Tell me where you are in the world. Um, because we're creating a community, you know, and I may be able to hook you up with events, uh, I run events myself. I'm a digital event producer. And so I hear about a lot of other events. And it may just be that just by writing that down, I'm a new earth leader. I'm a new earth influencer. When you write that down, I suddenly think, ah, oh, you know, you should be on this event. I can hook you up with that. So um, it really is meant to be something that helps you in your world. So here's the introduction today. Humanity is at a choice point of epic proportions and you, simply as someone walking on this earth right now, have a critical role to play. So if you are ready to do something positive, this time is for you. And so is this book. The little book of influence is about moving into the powerful work your heart yearns for you to do. Each chapter is a reflection on some aspect of having influence. Along the way, you'll get questions to consider, visualizations to bring you into clarity, stories of other influencers to give you inspiration, and lots of prodding to go out there and do what's calling to you. We'll ask you to adopt certain ideas that you might not instantly resonate with. That's okay. We're only asking you to act as if they're true while you're here with us in these pages, then you can decide whether continuing to act that way helps you live and lead more with more motivation, courage and clarity. Uncovering what you most want to influence and how you'll start doing it is the big goal of this book. So let's get started. Chapter one. Influencers don't change the system. They create a new one. Influence isn't about spouting your emotional reactions. You become an influencer by aligning with the evolution that wants to happen. So let me just put that into context. 
there is evolution happening all the time in humanity's history, her story. And if we are aware of this pull, this force, this flow, which is what the root derivative word of influence is, then we can feel what wants to happen and we step into it. So what exactly is an influencer? Merriam-Webster gives two def definitions. A person who inspires or guides the actions of others or a person who is able to generate interest in something such as a consumer product by posting about it on social media. So you can see they're really different propositions there. Sadly, in our celebrity obsessed world, the second definition is taken over. It's rare now to hear the word influencer without Instagram or social media before it. It's true that social media is one arena where you can have influence, but here's what's not true. If, and only if, you have a million followers, then you'll automatically have influence. That belief actually robs us of our power to be true influencers. As the Beatles sang, we all want to change the world. Another way of saying that is, we want to leave the world a better place than it was when we arrived. That's the kind of influence most of us crave deeply. So a life of meaning and fulfillment doesn't come from getting a million people to buy something or give you likes. It comes from knowing exactly what you want to improve in the world and helping set that change in motion. So why don't you think about it right now? What is the change that you would like to see in the world? What is the transformation that you would like to see in the world? When you develop true influence, you finally stop trying to prove that you matter because you know you do. You matter because you've become a disruptor to promote something better than the status quo. You stop trying to please others and you allow yourself to be outrageously expressive as you propose new ideas, ideas that some insist are crazy and will never work. So true influences, that's one of the first points of almost like the first obstacle that you have to get through that, you know, when you're putting forward something that seems absolutely, it's never been done before, then you will always get the first level of opposition, which is, this is not possible. How can this be? And I've, I've heard that all my life from people who are very, um, stuck and they can't think outside the box. And that's why I am who I am. So, you're willing to say the hard stuff many don't want to hear. You stop thinking about yourself so much because you're determined to have an impact on a topic that's much bigger than you. You don't hold yourself back out of fear or low self-esteem, and you don't self-aggrandize either. You also don't need endless praise and accolades to stay motivated. It's simply not about you anymore. In short, you trade being mired in self-doubt for being propelled by a great big soul driven purpose. You just step up and do what you know needs to be done. And how do you know what needs to be done? True influencers generally have a vision or an idea that seem to come from beyond their usual level of thinking. Some feel it came from source or their higher self. But it doesn't matter whether your mission as an influencer arrives in an unexpected flash or gradually dawns on you based on your life's challenges. What matters is that a true influencer's mission comes from a sense of deep connection to at least one of three things. People, animals, our planet. So I'm going to just stop there and get you to reflect for a moment. What is the first thing that comes to mind when I ask you, what would you like to transform on the planet? And we all know that the planet is going through this tremendous upheaval. Some of it is um, heartbreaking. Some of it is just, um, I would say, soul destroying. Like, you know, you look at the plastic pollution and it's just like, oh my God. Like there has to be a solution to that, right? So what is it in your world that you feel, if I could wave a magic wand 
what would that thing be? And it should be there right like that. And then the next piece of that is to think, is this part of a formation of a new piece of work that you want to do? Is it, in fact, the calling that makes your heart sing that you now in some way know that you need to move out of the job that you've had maybe in the past and start to create a bigger piece of a calling based business or entrepreneurial thread and and is the timing like urgent you know you getting to that point where you, you you keep thinking about it and you think well what should i do because there are different ways of doing things there are for instance just simply giving to charity that's one way but if that is not the thing that really turns you on if that's not uh blowing your mind rocking your boat or whatever you want to call it then is it something bigger first thing to say about that is you are the one you are the one most kids do not learn that that they are the one most kids learn that they're going to fit into something much bigger in society and in fact they aren't the one that's the safety zone that most parents teach their kids it's like you know we want you to be safe and so we want you to fit in and therefore don't don't think too high you know keep your keep your um, ideas quite tame and fit in and get to know a community and be good at school and all of that well what if we were telling our children you are the one so what is this crazy idea that you have and why is it crazy anyway but you know i use crazy in a great way what is this wild idea that you have and if we speak to our children like that like what is that idea what do you want to change if you could do anything and then adding you are the one we will see an amazing kind of upswell in solution-based thinking so that's my question to you today to set you off we're on the new moon and new moons are all about starting a new project and it's in all the cycles that we have the every month we get to clear the slate of the previous cycle and then step into a fresh one and so this today is the seeds of a cycle of mastery we've got the 11 going on i've talked to you about the 11 kings which is something that i'm setting out that's why i'm speaking into existence today i'm using it as an invitation now to men to come to me if you want that level of initiatory mentorship if you need an advisor to you as the king i am that advisor and so again how freaking crazy is that idea right it dawned on me i think in mythological terms sometimes and then i also do channeling and i get these deposits of information like downloads and if i was at school and i put forward like when i grow up I want to be an advisor to kings it would have been shot down pretty much immediately and instead it would be like you could be a legal assistant you could do this and that but it wouldn't be like oh wow but I am the one so if I am the one who's audacious enough to speak this into existence just like you are with whatever it is that you want to do in your own way in your own frequency with your own flavor that nobody else has then you are the one and the first premise of doing anything is that you are the one <laughs> right so when i speak about this being the advisor to kings and stepping out of coaching because that could be perceived as the way forward for money for a, a, a solid career for something that I've done for years so why wouldn't I want to continue instead I listened deeply to my calling and I was invited by source the universe guides to step out of coaching at this time it was a, 
I've mentioned it before, but all through last year, I was asked, requested to move out of the coaching and instead to create spaciousness. One thing was to create the events that I do, and that was part of a higher calling. But the other thing that's coming up behind that is that as I help New Earth leaders come out onto their stage, whatever it is, that some of the training, teaching or ideas that I have, which is super unconventional, based in spirituality and magical systems, ancient magical systems, that is what the kings need now. So I am stepping into that. And the first piece, just like I'm asking you to do right now, is to declare it. And how you declare it is you speak it. So it has to come out of your mouth in declaration form to somebody else. And so when I say to all of you, I am the advisor to kings, um, it, and it does sound like some kind of movie role or something like that, or Game of Thrones, um, I know in my heart exactly what that means. And the high level of business that I do and understanding of that is about cycles that it's the it's so not the corporate mentorship that I want to put out there in the world. I actually want kings to step back and reflect and to invite in collaboration and to be at a different pace in the way that they work to get these incredibly epic projects off the ground. And some of them, because I made an agreement as well, which is really out there. So I want you to listen to this very differently than me saying, hey, I really want to work with big money, which could be perceived like I want a Ferrari or something. I want to work with gigantic money. So I want to work with people who are working with billions and they are in my, the people I want to work with are ethical, spiritual, um, new earth kings who are actually have access to that level of transformation on the world. And I, I knew that as a child, I've never been interested in money as such or a Ferrari <laughs> as such, um, because I feel I've had that. I've already feel like I've inhabited that in previous incarnations, that level of wealth. That's not my interest, but it is to work with people who have that much money to be able to project out to help this new earth to create some really amazing projects. How am I creating this as the seed of this intention is to speak it. So today, the one thing that I will invite you to do is that after you see this, and if this is stirred, just started stirring you up, this is early spring. That's exactly what you should be feeling. A little bit of a stirring, little shoots coming up, then allow yourself to be the one, allow yourself to be the one who's speaking into your own space, but tell somebody about it. And, and don't be embarrassed because new earth is different. Like the minute you get that idea out there, Aquarius is high frequency levels of communication, even at galactic level and speed information coming in from different zones that we can't even imagine solution based thinking like that. And so speak it, speak it in front of the mirror, be the one. And if you have an idea, speak it to those who you think can help with your idea, you know, actually use the, the whole concept of collaboration, even just as a sounding board or even to, you know, there's another piece that if you aren't the extrovert or the one who's going to lead the thing, then go and find somebody who would be more of a leader and partner with them, like ally with them. So I think that's uh, a great place for us to start in February the 11th. Tomorrow is my birthday. So I'm feeling super excited because this little baby was, was manifested very, very quickly. I mean, it's a two year journey, but the actual publication journey has been insanely fast. And I made it, I really believe that that was part of the divine timing that this needed to come out in February and it needed to come out just around my birthday. So to have it actually in my hand, it arrived 
a couple of days ago. I can't tell you the the feelings of exaltation that that idea that I had swirling around to help New Earth leaders two years ago is now a book that they can read, you can read, and you can go on your journey and you can create some freaking transformation on this planet that we really, really need. And we really need you. And to feel the value of yourself there, to feel that you are the one. So I wanna leave you with that. And um, I've put in the links in the top of the Facebook page that there is a link to Amazon if you wanna get the book as well. You can get it on Kindle. Um, I'd be delighted. I'd also be delighted if you guys would write me a review on Amazon. So all good things. That would be the best birthday present ever for me is to just engage in this topic of New Earth leadership, help each other. And um, any help that I can give you, please just hit me up, leave me a little message. Um, I'm a real connector, networker. So, you know, let me know. And as we've started this sequence of the work that I wanted to do, again, because I work so much with um, moons, I didn't even realize that when I said to my assistant, hey, I'm going to start doing these things on Thursday, that I was actually, every two weeks, that I was actually going into a sequence of the new and the full moon this year. How perfect is that? Of course it is. Of course it is. You know, everything is like that now. Everything drops in these perfectly, perfectly planned divine times. So I will see you on the full moon in two weeks. And right now work on that seed of what is that thing that I want to transform on the, on the planet? Is it p to do with people, planet or animals? Just get that piece down and then say you are the one and tell somebody about it. Sending you so much love, namaste, exciting times.